Hey guys, how you guys doing? Today we're going to take a look at what can we use Linux for? I get asked that question a lot. There's a lot of new Linux users coming into the into the space and they're uh, finding us out on our Discord and we're talking about them and they're discovering many things that Linux can be used for and what many things use Linux that they didn't realize that they use every day on and it's kind of surprised people. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to talk about that. Hey, Teal Tears, how you guys doing? Uh, like I said, today we're going to take a, a dive into the world of Linux and exploring the possibilities of what this open source operating system can be used for. A lot of people don't really know what it can be used for, and they're constantly surprised by it. So uh, let's drop some knowledge on them. So Linux may seem like a mysterious beast to some, but in reality, it's just another powerful tool in the tech world. Uh, that being said, originally was developed as a Unix-like system for personal computers. Linux has since grown into a very, very versatile operating system using a wide range of applications that people just don't know about. So what is Linux? Well, unlike popular operating systems like Windows or Mac OS, Linux is an open source operating system that's built upon a kernel that was created by Linus Torvalds. Uh, the kernel is what people term as Linux. Um, it uses the GNU set of tools on top of it um, to make the operating system initially, and it's since then migrated into many different forms, different uh, types of Linux as far as like, you know, um, uh, Arch versus Debian versus, you know, um, different distributions, I should say. Um, so it, it's just evolved over the decades. The source code is very much so freely available for anyone to modify or distribute. The openness has led to a vibrant, a large community of developers uh, and constantly improving and customizing Linux to their to fit their needs and therefore making them uh, ver uh, distributions that are, you know, target specific to different things uh, like you can find game centric di distributions you can find development uh, centric distributions and also just regular general use and entertainment use one there, there's even ones that have made multiple flavors I'm speaking about Ubuntu who have made multiple different variants of it or flavors as I said uh, of it that are specifically geared towards different things one of them we'll talk about here a little bit further down which is surprising of what you could use Linux for too as well to most people and uh, they have a, their own variant for that uh, one of the things that it's known for and it's predominantly main claim to fame has got to be the server hosting one of the most common uses for Linux is in the server hosting field due to its stability, security, and flexibility. Linux is the go-to choice for hosting websites, databases, and other online services. Uh, many major companies use Linux. You got Google, Amazon, and Facebook. They all rely on Linux to power their server infrastructure. I mean, it, it's everywhere. Nine times out of 10, if you're logging into a website, an app on your phone, or anything like that, it's based and been written off of Linux. So there you go programming and developing is another thing that linux is used for all the time if you're a coder and or you're aspiring to be a developer linux is your best friend it's compatibility with a wide range of programming languages such as c plus freaking rust python all those languages and tools are in the perfect environment for software development in linux plus the command line interface in linux allows for a more fine-tuned control over your projects uh, yes, in Windows, you do have the PowerShell and you have all that good stuff, but uh, many, many, many tools, far more tools are written more for coding and developing in Linux than there are in the Windows space and Mac as well. But bar none, uh, like one of the distributions that I use as my daily driver, NixOS, actually was written for developers. It is made for them to be able to code for programs or apps or whatever they're, they're trying to develop uh, in uh, and, you know, write to it, do what they need to do, test it in this environment, and then they can actually switch into another environment because it's reproducible and it's redeployable. So, so it, it, I mean, there are many distributions out there that are similar to this that are can be used for this and are used for this. So that's where Linux has got a very, very strong hold in. Another thing, one of the greatest securities is Linux. 
cybersecurity. In today's digital world, cybersecurity is more important than ever before. Linux's robust security features, such as its definition between user land and super user or root privilege access for you know you have to elevate privileges in order to access is bar none better in fact windows is adopting that in their server edition they're actually adopting sudo you know super user do which is the first major step in their security that they've taken in uh, decades decades i'm telling you so i mean uh, cybersecurity pressures look to secure networks and protect sensitive data they use its open source nature means that the vulnerabilities quickly identified and patched very quickly by the community so nine times out of ten when a bug or a security flaw is found in linux it's usually fixed before the bug is actually discovered or like within like days, the, the patch is, is there so much faster than the windows world and the Mac world. It's insane. You know, how many eyes are looking at things in the Linux community to secure it and make it so much more of a secure option for your computing needs. Another thing that it's known for is it's internet of things, the IOT. That's right. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of your IOTs, Alexa, which is written, you know, for Amazon, works in Amazon. It works on their servers, which are Linux backed. Okay. A lot of your smartwatches and stuff, wearables are coded by in Linux. You can use them on this. In fact, there is a distribution that out there that I one that I could think of right off the top of my head, Ubuntu IO, uh, uh, IoT. It's literally an Ubuntu distribution dedicated to Internet of Things. It's got a server built into it that all your stuff can connect to. Uh, probably all the apps that you need, like I believe Smart Life, I think is there. I, I have to look at it to be honest with you. I think I'm gonna do a review on it. But anyhow, so it's all you know. It's got the the suite of tools in there to make you connect your things, and you can do connectivity right there within your house on a local intranet instead of something that is reliant on the internet itself to be accessible through your system route through your network's router which is kind of a, a, a vulnerability so uh, that is a good way um, of securing yourself into an intranet versus an internet and keeping your cameras safe from prying eyes of hackers out there uh, as long as you make sure that that server is never connected to the internet except for to update it and remove the cable and you're good to go and just connect it to a regular local router so another thing that it's used for is education linux is also widely used in the educational settings providing students and teachers with a free and accessible platform for learning about computer science and programming many universities are coding boot camps uh, and their coding boot camps use Linux uh, labs to teach students the ins and outs of IT. Now, that is just practical to do, considering that 90%, 99.9 of the servers you work on out there, okay, 98, if you want to argue a couple of the Windows servers might be out there, but 98% of the servers out there are Linux-based, so why wouldn't you teach on Linux? Another thing, uh, recently studies have found that Google Chrome, books which google chrome books and the google chrome os is actually linux it's it's a proprietary version of linux so it is actually taking over the educational space that people are using every day at home in regular schooling uh it's suite of tools that it has that are plug and play that you can download and install through, through the through the chrome store just makes it so much easier and once again, when it comes to the pricing, the, the pricing is right for the school system. There is not a lot of cost there and you don't have to relicense and relicense and relicense all these, you know, enterprise level and professional level uh, softwares that uh, the Windows versions that you would have to with, you know, Windows. So it saves it, the educational system and taxpayers a lot of money. So it's a great win there. Another thing. This is the one that people talk about the most and what most people want to use it for. And I will tell you right now that this is where the sticking point is for most people, but it's not to be said that you cannot overcome the sticking point. And that is for entertainment and gaming. 
Believe it or not, Linux is also making huge waves in the entertainment industry. With the rise of Linux-based gaming platforms like SteamOS and Proton, more and more games are becoming compatible with Linux, allowing gamers to enjoy their favorite games and titles on a Linux gaming system. In the entertainment world, they're talking about DaVinci Resolve, video editing, uh, using the OBS Studio to record videos. A lot of podcasts are done. Heck, look at all the YouTubers. I, myself, we're using Linux right now with open broadcaster software. You know, I mean, there's just so many things that are being done on Linux now in the entertainment world uh, that, that is just awesome. I mean, when it comes to DaVinci Resolve being used on Linux for editing, uh, there's issues because it works better with a with a uh, nvidia video card but the nvidia video cards don't work very well on linux uh they i mean they're better now and they're getting better uh but historically there's been issues with them bugs sometimes you'll reboot and you just have a black screen because driver updated and it crashed or whatever but as a whole uh i've never tried davinci resolve uh well i take that back i tried it once early on when i first started doing what i do and I actually found that it was okay and easy to use, and I got it to work very well. I believe I used it as an app image, and I had an AMD card, and it actually worked. So a lot of people say it doesn't work very well with AMD cards, but with me, it was a R9. Yeah, an R9 uh, Radeon card, and it worked just fine. Uh, it didn't render the fastest, but it was also not a very powerful card. I imagine with my 6700 XT that I have, it might be a little bit faster, but hey, you know, who knows? Either way, you know, it can, it's, it's being used in both those fields and gaming on Linux is getting better and better as time goes by. More and more games come over. Really, basically, the only thing that's really stopping it for the most part is the easy anti-cheat in a lot of the servers um, for like Call of Duty, those kind of things are giving a problem, but it's developers game developers start actually coding for the anti-cheat it might get a little bit better who knows we'll find out and of course the final one that everybody wants to talk about is personal computing personal com linux can be used as a daily driver on your personal computer with the plethora of user-friendly distributions like ubuntu linux mint uh you've got uh pop os you have fedora you know uh i Fedora is not as easy as those other ones that I mentioned, but anyhow, you've got that. And so, you, you know, you could use it on your personal daily driver if you want to surf the web, you know, surf the web, watch videos, you want to, you know, like, you know, like check your email. Uh, heck, you can get on Discord using it. Uh, you can, there's different Discord clients as well besides the Discord native app itself, you know, like WebCord and all those other kinds. But either way, there are many, many different tools that you could use as a developer, as a student, as tech enthusiast, enthusiasts alike, you know, within these Linux distributions. And you could be doing what you do on your everyday laptop with a laptop loaded with Linux right on it and not have any problem. The only caveat that you're going to have is the learning curve that it takes to understand how simple Linux is to use, the different applications that you might have to use that are not like a cross-platform application that is windows linux or mac users uh, because linux is not windows and you can't run windows apps on linux unless they're cross-platform and the wine compatibility layer doesn't do as great as most people think that it does it's it, it's buggy it's getting better but it's still buggy some apps are hit or miss on running it and so you may not be able to run a certain app that you really like on windows on Linux, but hey, that's not a deal breaker. It's open source. There's many alternatives. You just got to learn how to use them. Most people don't want to take the time to do that. And when they don't do that, then essentially they wind up shortchanging themselves because they could save themselves money, they could simplify their use, and they could do just as great things on it if they just took the time to learn it. But either way, that's it. So that's the conclusion of what you can do with linux so as a wrap folks thanks for tuning in to learn about what linux can be used for if you found this video very helpful please hey hit that thumbs up man that helps me out so much more don't forget to subscribe also if you haven't so you can keep getting the content that we drop on this channel and kind of further yourself along in the linux journey that you have so until next time y'all keep on linuxing stay blessed stay safe do what you do stay happy and above all i will see you in the very next one